Welcome back to Third Phase of Moon, Blake Cousins, and we've got the special for you. The anomaly over the Antarctic has been making waves, and we've got a special report for you, along with incredible UFOs coming in from around the world. But we want to thank Brian from Into Thin Air, who just earlier today shared us this special report with a strange anomaly captured on instruments, and he's about to share it with you. And could you imagine the weather system a losing all data at once for some abnormal reason we don't even know what the heck is going on except that something strange is happening in our skies uh, let's take it to into thin air with a special report guys listen up and there's been so much going on that it is actually impossible to cover all this stuff. So we're gonna stick to a few key points here. One of them taking place today, a very serious situation with our weather radar system. For at least the third time in a month, we have gone through here in the United States and parts of Canada, a major national weather service outage. And once again, this is coming on the heels or right before significant weather. And it's very, very interesting how this seemingly ties in with what's going on down by Antarctica and South Africa, another situation going absolutely crazy on the internet and I'm really starting to believe that a lot of this has to do with different types of frequencies whether or not and I'm not saying this lightly it's being used as some sort of weapon where we're seeing repercussions of whoever it is using this technology messing with the earth's weather honestly there's so many different theories out there but one thing we do know is that these situations are repeating themselves not just the weather radar but the situation down by Antarctica it's happened more than once so once again as I put these side by side the anomaly anomaly from February and then the anomaly again we just covered from April which right away should show you that this was no glitch and it's happened even before February coming from the exact same spot where there is an island and a very weird looking area to the west of that island that very much has the setup and looks like a large antenna system of course this may not exactly be the case but there is something absolutely something when it comes to frequency or some sort of powerful equipment down in this remote area of the world we are constantly seeing anomalies and weird artifacts on radar and a lot of it's been coming from this area and for a long time i mean just look at how symmetrical this one random area in the south atlantic ocean near antarctica and it just looks out of place of course this could be some sort of boat maneuvering and scanning the ocean floor but why right there what's going on right here in this area okay now to recap and this is very important again and i'm sorry if this seems repetitive but it's very important the island right here in between antarctica south africa this is the exact point of where the anomaly began back in February and in April. So two separate times that we have documented and it's happened more than that. According to comments I've gotten and people reaching out on X, this is not the first or second time we've seen this anomaly come from right in this exact area. So again, that led me to go down here to this island to scope it out, which we did in a previous video. It just looks like a snow covered island. Nothing really going on here. Some weird shapes and what looks like a very weird pyramid structure that reminds me of a very crazy discovery discovery I found on Antarctica a few years back that went viral on YouTube that has been linked here and on X as well but when you actually move over to where the anomaly on Windy was caught that is where we see this type of frequency looking setup it just reminds me of looking down on a big antenna structure and I mean again this is a very weird pattern to have right in the middle of the ocean somewhere where there's really not much going on it's really just this island here a super remote island a few scattered islands out and about but ground zero once again is right here even the frequencies that we saw on the mimic chart matched up with this exact time frame and then all you have to do is check out the weather in Cape Town South Africa and you will see that this area specifically has been having very very odd weather random fires very rough seas in one video I saw people walking around with water up to their knees and these people in Cape Town are the ones posting these videos and talking about it a lot of them have reached out to me to point out my video and explain to me that right around this anomaly and even the last time this anomaly happened, they had very severe weather. And as I stated earlier, this ties into what's going on with our weather radar here in the United States. Because in this day and age, with the technology that we supposedly have for our weather radars all at the same time to go down on multiple occasions within a month, I don't know about you, but to me, that seems like pre-planning to its finest. Now, as we stated, we lost half to nearly all of our National Weather Service weather radars. I don't think people realize how important that is. That means for a period of time, 
we had no data. Take a look at this. This right here is weather.cod.edu, a very good satellite weather radar station. And I want you to look what happens right about here. Look at that. We just lost from 730 UTC all the way to 1850. Completely erased, does not exist. I'll show you again. Let's backtrack. Here is April 15th, 6 o'clock UTC. As we move forward, it skips 11 hours of data. Boom, just like that. So you can see the extent of what this will do just a little while of our radars being down. Now also, and this is wild, take a look at this GIF chart here. I'm going to go ahead and hit play and you're going to see these artifacts popping up at the same exact time that we lost all that data. And it's still continuing right now. These little frequency artifacts, I have no idea where they're coming from, but they certainly are being picked up by satellite while the radars were down. Now, I know many of you may be new to this type of information, and I understand how there's contradicting thoughts, especially with people that don't study this type of stuff on a daily basis like I do, and a lot of you do. So we gotta be patient with people that don't quite understand what we're seeing here. We're seeing cause and effect. There are some serious things going on near South Africa specifically, whether that be exactly when this anomaly happened or shortly after, and even before, as you're seeing on video right now, each time we see these weird pulses coming out of that Antarctica area, it's usually followed by some sort of phenomena weather, whether it be South Africa or leading anywhere up the entire Atlantic Ocean. There's no telling what this type of technology can do if that's what we're dealing with here. That's for sure. And Into Thin Air, we appreciate you and your special report. I know you got more updates coming up on your channel. So everybody go check out Into Thin Air. I'm going to be supplying the original link in the description. Now, uh, Brent, quickly, before we get to the videos coming in from Russia and from around the world, it's quite incredible, the evidence right here at Third Phase Moon. What do you make of this stuff in the Antarctic? Yes, strange to say the least, it's Antarctica is a mystery and what we're looking at is a mystery, this phenomenon uh, anomaly that just kicked off and uh, Brian had the good eye to report on this. His video went viral just a couple days ago, so that's uh, congratulations on that one. Hey, when you're breaking down the reports and we're looking at something that we cannot uh, explain, uh, this is what, what it's all about. You know, there's so much strangeness that happens in this region of the planet, and it's one of those areas that you just really can't get to. We've looked into exploring the Antarctic and maybe hiring a vessel uh, to get around, but it's about 80 to 250,000 per person. Uh, they make it really difficult, and some of these world leaders, they have access, they're going up there for a reason. A lot of it is unknown, but uh, guys, let me tell you what we're about to share with you in the next uh, 10 to 20 minutes is quite incredible and this one coming out of Russia had the whole team over here at third phase of moon scratching their head wondering what the heck it this possibly could be guys an incredible bright orb
species that we're unaware of. But then again, I'm really happy that people across the planet are interested in the phenomenon. And even on a cold night, if these people weren't out there walking their dogs, nobody would have seen this. So this is very peculiar in the way most UFO videos come into third phase of moon. It's basically the public that has no idea what a UFO is. They don't even think about it, but they notice something strange that is not natural to what they think in natural process absorbing information as it's processed through the brain but they're smart enough to get their camera out because they're seeing something they can't explain and right now i'm having a hard time explaining to you what exactly this could be that's why we're trying to get the answers hopefully maybe somebody on the ground might be able to get to this area and see if there's any residual um trace elements of something that maybe have been detached from this craft as it was so close maybe there could be a crop circle within the area we need more information on this video brent any last thoughts before we get to the next one yeah we see a little landmark some sort of tower in the background i urge you if you're familiar with this place in russia go down there right now this could be a new hot spot you never know and if you're out there if you have a camera you see something like this you film it uh this again is good good footage and i'm glad we're we're looking at it closer right here and this thing does touch down it's amazing and some people might simply dismiss this as trickery or a reflection or some kind of cgi um, hoax going on here but in my opinion this is 100 percent legit the question is what is it with that being said let's roll the next video right now watch That was the cut. Let's uh, watch this once again. We've seen cigar shaped craft over bodies of water. I think this is a Pacific Ocean. And the trick is, Brent's telling me right now that it is confirmed off the coast of California. Thanks for that. Is that a Coast Guard vessel out there as well? I'm not exactly sure what kind of ship that is. But the question is, is what kind of ship is uh, levitating the in the air moving from right to left here they actually held the camera pretty steady so we could get a good look at it and i'm not seeing any kind of cabin underneath this or any kind of tail coming off uh the back end of the craft so i'm gonna have to dismiss the goodyear blimp what's going on here in my opinion is possible military experimental craft is what we're looking at and what a great place to do this uh, off the coast of California and possibly near this Malibu base. Brent, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I'm thinking this, uh, with the information that was given to me, I'm thinking this is more closer to Baja. And that's interesting. This activity of UFOs and encounters with the Nimitz back in 2017. Is there a military UFO exercise going on in the Pacific? That's a big, definite possibility. Now, I'm looking at this. It's large and it's moving uh, right to left at some speed. Uh, this thing's quite far away. And look at the speed that it's traveling. It's moving pretty fast. Now, 
people might dismiss this as a blimp, but why would a blimp be so far out over an ocean where they're not displaying an advertisement? That's not what they're in business for. They're there to display themselves. What's going on here? Here's a good map of right off the coast of California where it took place. And here we go. This is good information coming in. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up so we could uh, actually nail down the exact location of whatever this craft is. And in my opinion, like you said, Brent, it has no business being out there. I don't think it's anything to do with some kind of commercial advertisement. I'm thinking this could either be possible some kind of life form with advanced technology known as extraterrestrials, interdimensionals, whatever you call it. Maybe they exist in a short amount of time in, in areas that people are lucky enough to capture it on camera as we're looking at it right now. Again, it's very rigid in its form. I'm not seeing any kind of cabin. So again, I'm, I'm trying to get a closer look on this and see if I see any kind of navigational lights on this or FAA lights, I'm not seeing any of this. And even blimps are required by the FAA to have anti-collision lights aboard their vehicles. And I'm not seeing any of this. Some people might also say that it looks like the Tic Tac, but according to Fravor and some of the other pilots, this thing's much, much larger. And then again, this is a, a dark shade, not the white Tic Tac as we all know it, but in my opinion, that's because of the direction of the sun shadowing the craft itself. Brent, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, definitely. This thing's uh, pretty much darkened out by the sun's uh, setting itself. I'm gonna throw one more thing out there. Could this be maybe a banner being pulled by an airplane? Uh, we've got some really good close-ups right here and we don't see anything tugging this. Whatever's moving, I'm thinking it's moving on its own flight path. So what we're looking at here is a big question. We're ruling out CGI. That's for sure. This is the real deal. Now, like I always say, the big question, what is it? Yep. And again, the actual location to this craft off the coast of California. Guys, we want the answers and hopefully we could get them for you. But right now, this uh, this case is on the chalkboard for unknown. Now, take a look at this. Bizarro, right? These kind of UFOs are kind of making the rounds. And here's another one that's kind of in really close proximity to the person who's shooting it. And I don't know about you guys, but if this uh, was kind of approaching me, I'd be definitely pulling out my camera, but I would be kind of concerned on what's its uh, agenda in close proximity to me. Now, this is a pretty bizarro. Brent, what's your thoughts? Yeah, notice the big power lines and the structure holding it up, the tower. Is it interested in the electrical field? Uh, they're getting pretty close. If it had a, a touch with these lines, it would blow up. Now, could this be a balloon? Look at the spikes on it. I don't see it moving. It's not rotating or bobbing like a normal balloon would. This thing seems to be on its own flight path, just calmly dropping down and seem to be aware of the power lines in itself. It looks almost biological, some people might say. Uh, this was given to us and Jaime Mossad wanted to ask, what does the American people think of this video? What's going on here? Yeah, absolutely. Telemosoro and Jaime Mossan reaches out. They want us to share their evidence to the American community and as well the world itself. They know Third Phase Moon's a huge platform getting the information out. So appreciate appreciate that, uh, Jaime Mossan out of Mexico. But again, the question is, what the heck is this? You're right, Brent. If this were a balloon, I would think I would see some kind of undulation uh, on the structure of itself it's very very rigid even the spikes itself uh, seem not to waver one single bit so in my opinion whatever this is it has some girth to it it's very rigid and i don't see any prop propeller blade so it's not a drone so again we're just trying to figure 
out what the phenomenon is. And if this indeed is a phenomenon of some kind of life that we're unaware of, well, that's the whole idea of third phase of the moon. That's why we're asking the public to send us their footage. And again, we want to thank Jaime Mosan for uh, getting this to us. Even though the clip's pretty short, I would have liked to see where it went, where it came from, maybe some eyewitness testimony as we get from the public. But that being said, it's still very bizarro. Now, let's get to this. It's a pretty cool sighting of what looks to be some kind of experimental craft at a high altitude illuminating the clouds. Watch this. video up once again and zooming in about about 50 percent to get a closer look and i'm looking at this bright orb i can see that it's high high up there in the atmosphere possibly the stratosphere or maybe space i'm not sure if this could be a satellite i'm not seeing any um fa lights on it so i'm gonna have to roll out commercial it's, but i really like points of this video where you can see it shimmer off the clouds so then i'm thinking this is a lot closer to the person on the ground who's shooting this as it illuminates the clouds around it this is pretty interesting look at this as it illuminates the clouds this is pretty bright and this is beyond any kind of drone that i'm aware of to uh, do this kind of activity and i would estimate these clouds to be at least maybe 10 to 15,000 feet in altitude. Brent, what's your thoughts there? Yeah, it's pretty cool. You can just see it. It's kind of dancing in and out of the clouds itself. Uh, it's doing its path. It almost seems to stall at some point too. This is pretty cool. We're, we're seeing orbs. People are submitting them to us on a daily basis. And this is good evidence right here. Could this be something in space, a possible satellite? Well, that's a question here, but we did see it right there where it illuminated the clouds itself. And that was pretty spectacular. Absolutely, Brent. Maybe Space Force is up to something up there uh, above top secret kind of things. That's something to comprehend and keep into the thought process as we move along in this field of ufology or getting to the truth or disclosure, whatever you call it. I think we all understand we're trying to find the answers right here at the just might say it is an atmospheric ph phenomenon due to the fact of a static charge um, seismic activity could create a static charge but i'm rolling that out as well this seems more organic and lifelike some kind of harness of the energy from the volcano this is pretty incredible stuff right here yeah the best part not only do we get footage from uh, nighttime including daytime it it seems to be happening on a 24 7 at this particular volcano and the activity over there it, it's non-stop what's really going on and that's a big question around the planet volcanoes seem to be a magnet for ufos it, it, it's just outstanding absolutely and if you're again enjoying this give us that big thumbs up because we've got another one for you and we're trying to find the answers right here at third phase moon so don't forget if you captured anything amazing out there, upload that video to YouTube, copy paste that link to my email. It's in the description. Make sure you have a steady hand, get a good shot. And if you wanna be really, really cool, videotape yourself 
with a two minute testimonial video explaining your experience and what you saw and send that to my email as well. It really helps a lot. Everybody, don't forget one last time, you know, like we all do. Thanks for joining us. But remember, we're not alone. We'll see you next time. Looking around. Here in Washington, it's 3 p.m. We're following a developing story. Could the military patrol... Well, you don't just have two, three, ten trillion dollars vanish. We've given so far 171 billion dollars. Most of the work being done on this are private corporations. Call this a hybrid entity that's neither strictly government nor strictly private. If these are extraterrestrials are real and they're getting here from another star system, they're not using 20th century or early 21st century technology. People at the CIA call it WSFM. Weird science and frickin' magic.